I, I want to point out to everybody now, um, because I know exactly what you have to do to make these videos. And basically, we record this in the most ask about tit way, back to front, for you must have to... <laughs> you do it, it must drive you wild. Because your brain is just random and jumps everywhere. Like, like we're 45 minutes into this half hour long podcast and we haven't done the opening link yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it reminds me of a Harry Enfield sketch, right? And he does that thing with, with the, um, it's the women know your place. And it's got that, that video where the man's mind fills up nice and neatly. And then the woman's mind fills up and it fills up like a quarter of the way. And then it goes, well, this is hysterical and cra like crazy. That's basically my mind. You're saying you have a woman's mind and you're being really sexist about it. No, I, I didn't say I agreed with it. I think, well, the, look, it's a the whole ah, oh, you bastard. This is the Sheer Isolation podcast. It's presented by Kieran Moore and John Ponting. Welcome to the Sheer Isolation podcast. Thank you once again for joining us this week. Uh, where myself, uh, John Ponting, and Kieran Moore over there in Trowbridge, we talk over Zoom and we uh, do our best to promote local music, which is still there, even though you can't actually see it happening. You can hear it. You can still hear it, yes. At the end of last week's uh, podcast, we said that we would have James from 2000 Trees to talk about the festival. Now, he's unfortunately not too well at the moment, so he's had to postpone. We'll hopefully he's be able to talk to them. Stones. Not nice, is it? We're, we're hoping to um, chat to them or some, somebody at the festival in the coming weeks. But we've, we've got some um, Brian Reed instead. Karen, do you want to tell we've us? We've got Brian Reed. I'm delighted we've got Brian. Uh, Brian was going to be next week's guest, and I just said to him earlier, I said, Brian, can you just do it tonight? Would that be all right? And he said, yeah, that's fine. Oh, so, John, I've yes. got two product placements this week. One, two. Good stuff. Yeah. Rough. What, what, are, we, what are we promoting? Um, well, actually, we've, we've kind of promoted them already over the course of the previous eight previous um, uh, podcasts. And so we have the wonderful blues musician from Devizes, Joe Edwards, and this is his debut album. And we played a track off of it um, on the first show, I think. Mm. Uh, it's called Keep On Running, and it's from his own like imprint record label. He was fighting around Scotland, wasn't he? It's a good video. It was. That's, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Um, and he had the most wonderful experience of the day. So he, he literally woke up in the morning, flicked on the radio in bed, and his song was being played by Karis Matthews. And then the other track is Olivia Aubrey, who is my, our American friend. Um, her vinyl she sent out from America, and it's taken like weeks to get here. And all my friends are going, I've not seen it, I've not received it, I've not received it. So hang on, guys, it's the post, it's America, it's all fine. And finally, it's come through, and I'm delighted with it. Um, so I'm super happy about that. We played one of her tracks as well the other week. Um, we played geo Geolocation. So today I've picked a track, it's my turn to pick a track, and I've picked a Chippenham-based band. Um, I think they kind of live in, all they live in Bristol now, because everyone goes to Bristol, don't they, if they're local. But they were originally from, from Chippenham, or some of their members were, and they're a band called Erotic Secrets of Pompeii. And they kind of sound a little bit like idols, they're fun, and they've got a track called Utterly Rudderless. Um, it's got a weird intro, it's, got, uh, it's a great song, um, it's a lot of fun, silly lyrics, um, but this is a big shout out to my friend Chris who I work with, Chris who I work with at the Neald, um, he's a bit, bit down in the dumps at the moment and he introduced me to this band, um, they were previously in another local band called uh, the some Dead Pheasants, so in the band, Chippenham Bank with Dead Pheasants, they're now called Erotic Secrets of Pompeii. He introduced me. I think they're great. So this is a, this is a, playing this for Chris to put a big smile back on his face. How have I never heard of a band with a name like that? Jeez. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I know. When you, it's not one you forget, is it? No. Because <laughs> Pompeii, obviously, Vesuvius blew up, um, covered them all in ash, and there's all sorts of uh, things were happening when their bodies got immortalised, like mm -hmm. perhaps, um, you know. I'm sure we'd be doing exactly the same. Erotic stuff. I would have been. That's my last minute not, on not, Earth. Yeah. Not between us two. We're, we're a good 30 miles away, but... Yes. We're a bit yeah. closer. <laughs> um, but, you know, yeah. Live a bit closer, absolutely. Box, 
as I watch television, 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 television. Jesus was an astronaut. He's gonna save us all from hurt, isn't he? Isn't he? Isn't he? Isn't he? I read the books by dead white men. Read them up, read them up, read them again. Deny, 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 deny. Right, so I've done. I've got. I've done. I've got all my things. I have to say. I'm crossing them off. I've done that. I've done that. Doing a script. Yeah, kind of. We should be. You know, we 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 pretend we're slick and we're pro, but we're actually not. <laughs> my my script has about twenty words on it. That's probably not. I'm going to show on my. There's only yeah, about, no, just about to see that. Only about actually, twenty I've words on it. I've got it up on my other screen. It says track Kieran Joyce, Brian Reed guest. <laughs> Um, Brian Reed is a Chippenham based um, muso. He's, he's, been in music, he's been involved in the Wiltshire music uh, scene for, for many years. I first met him when he came to Devizes with his um, son's bands. They were called Roads to Nowhere. And this is a great story because they were like a, a metalcore five piece. But what's so unique about them is they had two front women. And I can remember putting them on for a Devizes Festival Battle of the Bands in the Corn Exchange. And these two hardcore screamo front women and the rest of the show and the bill was just all indie boys. I tell you now, they scared the life out of that, that show. That, that audience were just terrified of these two adolescent teens just ripping into the mics. And it was, it was an amazing thing to watch because I was there obviously going, I, I like a bit of metal or whatever. Watching it going, yeah, this is great. Watching all these kids going, don't know what to do. <laughs> it's amazing. But Brian happened to be the guitarist dad. Um, he, he started roadieing for them. He drove them around the country. He helped them at almost every stage of their career. He got to do some amazing stuff with them. Um, he's someone that I respect an awful lot. Um, he's just, just a super, super guy. I knew you through Roads to Nowhere. And obviously you had the very locally famous um, session on Chippenham FM. I mean, really, let's take it from the off. Uh, how did you get involved in music in the area? Well, my son Jacob would have been 14 um, and uh, starting to get really, well, already really serious about guitar. 
um, and uh, started playing in a band. And I basically, I um, sort of became like a sort of de facto um, band manager. But that basically is just like glorified transportation consultant. So okay. literally driving the band forward. Well, yeah, well, literally. And uh, you just like sort of, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I didn't do anything particularly special. I mean, I sold my car and bought a van. Okay. That's not that's incredibly special. How many parents would do that? All right. Especially especially an ex school bus van, which like sort of basically had seven seats and a massive space in the back for all the kit. Because I, even within the state you just can't put a band's kit in the back of a car. Not with all the gear <laughs> they had too. No. No, no, not when you play metal. Anyway. <laughs> they had Marshall Stacks taller than the members, didn't they? It was just big abs, big everything, you know. Um the, the, the payback for me was actually, um, first of all, sort of getting to interact with my son and his mates um, without the parent thing going on. Yeah. Basically, I was just like sort of the driver. I used to treat them all the same, you know. Um, but, um, but uh, you know, so, I, you know, they choose the music on the way to the gigs. And while they were sleeping in the back and I was driving home, I'd listen, I'd choose the music. But the music they chose completely destroyed my taste buds for a while um it just it completely sort of introduced me to a whole load of bands i never heard of never even inkling had an inkling that existed um and then um i think that um you know i've always been into my music but i was pretty much uh you know sort of uh early 50s like sort of set within a you know a tight pattern i know what i like and i like what i listen to and so, but this ignited in me um, that, that sort of that joy of discovering new music. Yeah, I mean, I, we we had loads of fun, and it, but the, the most important thing was actually watching them grow and seeing, and and actually listening back to some of the early stuff and realizing how, as a parent, how completely sort of ear blind you are. Right? <laughs> you just got you, you know. I have to I have to look back to truly appreciate how awful they were when they started. All right, <laughs> but the fact is, is like, is like you take the trajectory of the band over like six or seven years. Yeah, uh, the stuff they were doing at the end, and they produced an album. Um, that I know that they're really proud of. It's uh, a great album. It is a brilliant album. Um, yeah. and um, and they actually produced another smaller album, which they reduced, which uh, they brought out literally just after they split up. But that was that again. That moved on to another level. So there was a lot going on there. Yeah. Um, it's always sad to see those things that sort of um, fall apart. But actually, you know, I mean... It was all good memories. It was all good experiences. Yeah, if you're a teenager playing music, all right, and, you know, then literally, you know, you, nothing's happened to you yet, but you want it to, and you yeah. dream of it. And then when it actually happens, you realise it compromises your ability to actually keep doing what you want to do. It's called life. Yeah. <laughs> But, but Brian, obviously that's not where your music journey finished because it wasn't long after or in the middle of doing that, you took on the Chipram FM session. In the middle of that um, experience of looking after the band and getting involved with that band, um, seriously, and, and really committing to that, um, I was um, diagnosed with throat cancer. I remember, and you overcame it. Well, you know, I mean, one of the things that, one of the things that kept me going while I was, um, while I was um, uh, recovering uh, and going through my treatment and what have you was actually, you know, booking a booking a uh, a tour um, for Road to Nowhere with ben, be, uh, beneath my feet. All right, there's an um, extraordinary Swedish, you know, metal rockers. But actually, you know, while I was going through the chemo and radiotherapy and all the rest of it, um, being able to uh, focus on the logistics of organising a tour and financing it and t-shirts and all the other stuff that you have to do. Yeah. Just, man. It, um, yeah, it, I don't know. I, it's not really about sort of taking me away from it. It's just about being able to do something else. It's got nothing to do with you. You just got yeah. to ask to complete and you got to get on with it. Um, you know, but, I, so, I, I remember you having cancer and I remember you, we, we used to talk a lot on the phone, didn't we, during that period? And I'm glad you mentioned that then because actually you sometimes forget the journeys that people have been on. And I, Although I know you very well, I've known you for a long time. I actually forgot you'd had cancer until you mentioned it then. And that's. Yeah, well, I, 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 I mean, I try to forget I had it, but <laughs> but, but the thing is, I'm seven years in remission now. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I'm I'm 
I don't call, I don't call, I'm not a cancer sufferer. I, you know, it's something that happened to me a while ago and something that's always there. But, um, you know, um, I, basically every day above ground is a good day. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay. you know, and we can tell you on that. We're going to use that as our quote. <laughs> the worst day of your life is still better than being dead. All right. Um, so, you know, because you've got the chance to affect stuff. Uh, I, I mean, basically, the guy that runs Cheltenham FM, Andy Thatcher, he's been a good friend of mine for a long time, more than 20, more than 25 years. Um, and um, he, after I recovered uh, from my, at my illness, um, and I'd written a blog, and Andy had read it, and he'd asked me to, he'd asked me if I wanted to sort of do a show on uh, for Cheltenham FM um, to talk about that, not, and I went in as a guest and did that. And then a couple of weeks later, I did a, like a news review thing with him. Um, and then he, you know, he said to me, oh, you, you fancy doing a show? And I thought, well, you know, how why often not? do you do that? <laughs> you know, why, you know, so, uh, I, so, you know, he came up with a name. We called it the midweek mojo. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we tried to do it every Wednesday and I ended up doing it for six years. Well, I started, I started in 2013, um, in, uh, in, I think it was uh, December, December 2013. So two months after or three months after I got the all clear, um, but I still hadn't had my new shiny gnashes fitted. So I, so I had no teeth. So basically I did a bad Chris Eubank impression for the first three months. And then I, I then I got these. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I've, I've listened back to some of those recordings and I have to say, like, I, like I said to you, I am beyond embarrassment. Okay, Brian. So uh, you've you've done the band, you've done the radio. Uh, are you planning anything else to do with music or creative or cultural expression? Well, yeah, well, I mean, I've 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 always um, been uh, creative. Just the okay. difference uh, was I wasn't public about it. Okay. Um, with my experience with. Um, with illness and the realization that uh, you know sort of when you hit your early 50s and suddenly you you know you, you have to sort of think you have to take a check on all of the things that you do and decide well what am I actually going to do what do I want to do and I thought to myself that uh, all the advice that I'd been giving my son all those years which was basically if you've got the balls to get up on stage you can learn everything else okay <laughs> all right <laughs> and then I thought to myself about the time I had the balls to get up on a stage. <laughs> right? um, so, um, uh, so I started doing that. So now I, you know, I, um, obviously uh, with the lockdown, it's been, uh, things have been seriously truncated, but we've still managed to produce a film every week over the last 10 weeks for can do for the lockdown mm -hmm. session, which has been very well received and lots of diversity and stuff going on there. Um, but for me personally, the last few years, I've been much more concentrating on my own poetry and my own writing. Um, and uh, I've been trying to revisit, you know, I've been trying to revisit my cancer experience, but from the prism of distance where, you know, when, when you're in it and it's just happened to you, um, it colors everything. And, you know, five years down the line, you can, I can read my blog and remember how I felt and think about that. And so it just gives me a different perspective. I don't want to rehash what I've already done, but yeah. I do want to, into that experience so that's coming out in terms of poetry um you always did poetry didn't you well that's right yeah so you know now I, you know i'm still i'm still poeting all right <laughs> um, is that a word? <laughs> it is now if, if you're a poet you can make up your own words that's the rule there you I go like, i like to describe myself as a word monger right which means, which means i'm quite word happy love it <laughs> like a fishmonger well, yeah, but yeah, but, look, but with words, you know, and the great thing about words is they never go off, they never make you feel ill. Well, they can, but they, they don't actually physically upset you. Well, they can do that too, actually. <laughs> you know, it's great when you you, you do a, you do a piece and there's and there's something in it, and you get an, you can hear like an audio, even you get an audible visceral reaction to a specific phrase or an image or an idea. And that, you know, when I do that, I feel oh yeah, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. I want to. I like to affect people with my wordage, um, you know, and, uh, but that's easier said than done. <laughs> right. oh, we're going to have to get you on another time, Brian. You can do a bit of poetry for us. That'd be good. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. I've got, I've got a short poem, actually. I could do it for you. I'm going to remember that. All can right, we do this that? Is... Can we do that? Let's do it. You want me to do it now? 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is a this is not a love letter. This is more like a poison pen letter. All right. And um, and it's um, it's just it's a, it's just called Katie. Okay. All right. And it goes like this: toxic hater, media crone, effluent creator, moral free zone. I'd rather choke on a herring bone than listen to her drone on and on and on and on about the latest victim she's lit upon, battered with a stone, made to feel alone, exposed to the first cone generated by the spotlight thrown, and at the centre, this shabby woman on her media throne, her talents as yet unknown to anyone without a heart of stone. Thank you very much. We won't, no, no guesses for who that's about then. Oh, there you go. I did actually have somebody come up to me afterwards and say, did you know my name is Katie? I was going, Jesus. It's not about you, love. <laughs> okay, Brian. Before the show, I said to you, Brian, can you pick a song for us to play? Can you tell me who it is? Yes, I can. All right. So uh, the reason I chose this one, yeah. um, is that I've known this young man for quite a long time. Um, and... Uh, when back when Jake was first started playing in his, his band Rose to Nowhere, my son Jake, um, he looked up to this guy and he was in a band called Sell, Sell Your Sky. Oh, yeah, a band based in Chippenham. I think they shot a video in the old, in the old cinema, uh, and he stuff like that. played for me a number of occasions. Okay, all right. So his name is his name is Rob McLeod. Um, but now he's he's performing under the name of Mac Lloyd and he's been doing a lot of stuff with Beat Bandit Studios, uh recordings in Bristol and that you sort of move in with a different crew and he's moved on from punk and he's moved into soul and he's gone into like hip hop R and B. Um, interesting. So, so this is, a, this is a, uh, his first like sort of solo release. All right. Um, and, um, I just think it's amazing. It's a fantastic track. It's a beautifully atmospheric video, um, shot in Bristol and, and sort of very sort of, um, and also strangely sort of um, appropriate for the times that we're in at the moment, which is a bit weird and lonely, even as the lockdown starts to ease. Um, so I, I just think like this deserves a wider audience. And if you haven't seen it before, I hope you enjoy it. But I, I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's called, it's called Trapped and it's by a guy called Mac Lloyd. Don't know what it's like to be 
trapped inside No, I don't see no light So I don't see no sunshine of the last time I came here yeah, It hasn't been too long Give me a moment to remember Gather my thoughts Click my finger And then go as chosen by Chippenham's Brian Reed. Uh, thank you, Brian, for the song. Um, it was very good. He was previously in Sunless Sky. That was quite a radical departure from what he was and what he is now. Um, I will be looking into that because I do like um, the concept of the change and uh, hopefully putting on something slightly different locally. So if we can get him in for a gig, we will. Yeah, we need to um, get did... Brian on more often just so we can do more poetry. Yeah, well, absolutely. I think we should have Brian's corner every week and he gives us a poem. Why not? Let's do it. Let's make that a thing. <laughs> Um, I did want to say one, uh, one thing, actually. Um, today, um, Wil uh, Wiltshire, English Folk Expo, which is an organisation that uh, supports roots, uh, folk and acoustic music, they've just opened their auditions or their submissions for their mentoring programme. If you are a musician and you want to look for mentoring or look for access to uh, more con uh, connections and all that kind of stuff and networking um, absolutely go and check out their website and apply for this opportunity especially if you're a budding local singer songwriter acoustic folk or otherwise um one little bit of news i've picked up on this week um you know festival on the farm yes take place out by Perton. so they've um they normally uh, their weekend is the first weekend in august so they've done what we would expect now and put out a a press release to say that they're, they're going to have to postpone but they have put a little optimistic paragraph in there to say that if they can go ahead then they will go ahead uh, safely and, and following all, all guidance but for the moment they're saying postponed but with the hope that they can do something um, and obviously if you bought tickets then uh, they'll roll over to next year which is what a lot of festivals have been doing uh, they're, they're taking the optimistic route I, I know plenty of other festivals have, have just called it a day um, Maybe there is a glimmer of hope for, for people in August, uh, for events in August, who knows? Well, I'm, I'm hoping that I've, I've just set the nil to where I've been uh, rigorously cleaning and painting today. Um, I know that we have cancelled or have postponed, cancelled is not the right word, we've postponed our Jive Talking show until next year, which now means that that weekend is free. And I believe there is potential for there to be an outdoor gig in Trowbridge at the bandstand um, and hopefully I will be looking to 
to host that for the weavers market so it'll be like a sister event for the weavers market it'll be a daytime event hopefully external outdoors socially distanced possibility that we could start seeing some of these things happen so with any luck that will happen and you'll but it, we'll know more in a couple of weeks and we'll i'm sure i'll tell you cool Cheers for glimmers that, glimmers indeed yes Right. If anybody wants to get in touch, the best way of uh, contacting us is by email, sheerisolation at gmail.com. You can send us YouTube links, send us any news, events, articles, whatever you feel is relevant for the podcast. And that is us uh, done for the, for the week. So, uh, Kieran, it's been a pleasure as always. I love talking to you, John. All right. I will see you next week then for, for another random night of editing through a big long Zoom meeting. Right. Kieran, look after yourself. All right. See you. Take care, buddy. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.